Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. We're going to kick things off with part two of our look at the newest, hottest phone in China. A phone you can't get in the U.S. Jason Howell from All About Android has the Xiaomi Mi 4. Mi 4. Why do we care? Last week with the Mi 4. Why do we care? Because in the past couple of years, we've heard a lot. We've continually heard more and more about this Chinese company named Xiaomi and their dominance in the Chinese market. China is a huge market, obviously, in the, in the cell phone world. We're so used to hearing about Samsung being this dominating you know, uh, Korean manufacturer, and here comes Xiaomi, and they're creating really impressive hardware. They have ambitions to be in the US, at least, definitely they have ambitions to go more global than they are right now. Um, so I think this is just kind of the beginning. We, we are gonna continue to hear more and more about Xiaomi. But more than that, uh, they hired a way one of Google's top presenters, Hugo right. Barra. We used to love watching him at Google mm-hmm. I.O. and other events. He's now their vice president for international, mm-hmm. which tells me that Xiaomi has its eye on the U.S. market. Absolutely, and he's yeah. kind of critical to that. That was part of the reason that he was brought in, was to uh, just help them go global um, to a wider scale. So you gave us a, a quick look, at because you had just received it at yep. the Xiaomi 4 last week. You spent a week with it. Give us yeah. your thoughts. I actually took it camping this week. So oh. it seems like camping is kind of a little bit of a thread in, in today's show. Yes, it is. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've spent the last week with this as my sole phone. Of course, I'm on T-Mobile. And one of the big downsides right now with this device in particular is that it's meant for the Chinese market. So LTE in the States, it's not going to work. There is a model of the Mi 4 that's expected to come out later this year that will have LTE support. So it'll support more bands of LTE. But here in the States and definitely on T-Mobile, uh, I was on kind of slower speeds. It wasn't. It wasn't the end of the world. It was still kind of HSPA uh, plus, you know, speeds like five megabits or whatever. Not bad. So that's not bad. But the nice uh, thing about T-Mobile, faster. at least around here, is not very congested, so you get all yeah, the bandwidth you that can get. Is- Fair enough, that's very true. So let's just rattle off the specs real quick to catch everybody up. It's a five inch 1920 by 1080 uh, IPS LCD display. That's 441 pixels per inch. And right off the top, the display I think is one of the key features of this phone. It's an amazing display. It looks so good on our uh, screen here. It's weird, like my eyes again are just being like, uh, you know, they're, they're being warped to uh, future devices, because I've gotten so used to how sharp everything looks on here. When I look at my Nexus 5, for some reason, uh, I have to kind of alter alter myself a little bit to enjoy it. It has all the Christmas and dynamic range of an OLED display. But all the advantages really of a does. higher quality IPS display. So it really this, does. This seems like the display of the future from not just this company, but every other company. Yeah, it's really good. I will. I will say though, I've only had it a week, and I don't know if you can catch it in the reflections. Probably not. But there are tiny little scratches that have Uh-oh. already kind of not good. Kind of happened. So no, I, I don't know what that means for the longevity of the screen from a durability standpoint. Uh, but there you go. And I take I take care of my devices. Although I guess I did go camping, so it's very possible that something happened there. Uh, 2.5 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon 801 processor, which is pretty much top of the line right now. 801's great with three gigs of RAM. So this thing is screaming. And I think I said on last week's show, and it continued to be the case, OS uh, OS level stuff for the most part really, really happy with. Things just kind of fly when you're working through it and you know going everywhere that you need to go. Um, there's not as much slowdown or lag on this that I'm used to seeing out of most Android devices. So I don't know if that's the software or or what, but uh, it's, well, that's it's a, really great. That's a good point. This isn't stock Android. No, it? this is uh, this is their own version of Android called MIUI. And actually, because of that, because it's a you know Chinese company, they have their own MIUI. You can see it's kind of like a vertical or sorry, a horizontal layout. There is no app drawer. There's a lot of you know, a lot of intricacies of this particular OS. But it feels a lot like the iPhone, doesn't it? It does. Well, yeah, and I mean, you can see from the design, right? It takes a lot of design cues from the from the iPhone. Back actually looks a lot like Samsung. <laughs> it's more of a plastic back. This they back steal from the best. Cover, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the thing about this device that I've noticed over the past week. There, there isn't a whole lot of originality with this device, right? But they do it really well. Yeah. So it's not the most original device, but they've integrated all of these components into a really nice, tight 
package that just works. It works really, really well. That's not aluminum around the edge. That's uh, stainless. Stainless steel. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Which I like as a material. <laughs> Although I had this on the dash navigating up to our campground. And by the time we got there, I'd take the phone off the mount and Pretty hot. screaming hot. Yeah. Like I could hardly even hold it. But yeah. I, I suppose that's just uh, par for the course. Um, 16, so three gigs of RAM. There's 16 gigs of storage in this device, although you can get up to 64 gigs. 13 megapixel rear facing camera and eight megapixel front facing camera, which sound great, but I'd say the camera is one of the big downsides here. I don't know if you have those images lined up, Brian, but, um, and, and I don't know how well it's gonna come across on video on the screen, but basically a lot of the pictures that I took, even in great light, cause you know, we we're camping, it was sunny, it was really nice. I had to really kind scramble to find solid out. pictures. That's, that's that nighttime, that's okay, but yeah. I mean, there were a million others at, during this, this time that didn't come out so mm -hmm. well. Lots of smears in the faces, um, you know, partially because they're moving, but this one I was able to get a, a good picture. But again, I had to really go digging to find some solid, solid pics. Is um, it the same Sony chip that's in everything else? 13 megapixels makes me think it might be. Yeah, I, th I believe that it is. Yeah. I, I want to so say it really that it is. it comes down to software. Sorry. That's HDR. I thought the HDR was okay on it because um, it was kind of dark. A cha that's a challenging shot. Yeah, yeah. and this, well, we this saw this just, on Facebook. You know, I love yeah, this. <laughs> cute, cute indoor, but this is front-facing camera. So oh, I will say that the front-facing camera is pretty decent. It's an 8 megapixel front-facing camera, so it's not bad. And then the video um, just got a lot of jumpiness to some video that I, that I recorded on Audio on that video would max out really easily and just kind of distort. So I would say the camera is definitely not the strong suit on this device. Um, Non-removable 3080 milliamp hour battery underneath this case. You can actually remove this case if you have a suction cup. It'll pop it right off. And they have uh, replacement cases. So, you know, everybody's doing the stylized, like, Moto X, uh, Moto Maker style, you know, replacements that you can do. And you can customize this as well with different backs. Now, when we talked last time, you said you were able to put the Play Store on here. And I was. You okay. can install all the apps. So have you put the Google Apps on there? Yes, I have. So if you go into the Me Market, I believe this is the Me Market anyway. <laughs> can you read this That's for me? That's the problem. Uh, you, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's still a lot of Chinese. Wait a minute. No, there it is. There's the Me Market. Okay. So if you go into the Me Market and you do, do a search for Google, um, you'll find this app right here, which is the Google installer. And this is how everybody kind of does it. Basically, all I did is I installed the Play Store through here. And it, it. and it has four, th three dependent files that you also have to install on it. It does that for you. Then once you have it, then you can go into the Play Store, associate your account to it, and uh, you know download all of your normal apps. So now it's just a normal experience. Yes, but it comes with a downside, right? Play Services is this is this crazy beast, you know, that we've gotten very very used to inside our Android devices. But because this is a Chinese device with a different um, UI, so so kind of getting to me UI, right? Um, it has some different workings underneath. For example, fill into apps, which is something I use all the time for LastPass. And I'm sure you do too, because oh, you're a yes. LastPass user. Doesn't work on this phone. Yeah, doesn't work even if LastPass is logged in and everything. Right. Link Bubble opening uh, links deep by default into Link Bubble that doesn't work. Mm. So little things like that, which make me kind of hesitate to say this is a phone for everybody. More a phone for at least in the U.S. It's more a phone for tinkerers uh, if you're dependent on on Google's services. You know, opening Play Store links in the app versus a browser. So if you click it on a normal Android device, it would just take you right through to the Play Store and open it there. But here, it just, it always goes into the browser. So mm. you kind of have to go to the Play Store and search it. Uh, so it's kind of a hacky way uh, to do it with this device. Um, other things, theme store. If you have me credits, you can theme your device. I could show you theming it really quick. Um, I didn't get a credit, this was a free one, and I'm not sure that I really care for it too much, but I'll, I'll install it just to show you kind of the process, and now it's loading the launcher. Are those capacitive, but it doesn't have physical buttons, they're capacitive buttons They're capacitive the buttons down at the bottom, yeah. All right, so now, now it looks even more like an iPhone. A new theme, which apparently, if I go two swipes, then I get this like strange overlay. Uh, that, I, don't, weird. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know either, but. Oh, that's interesting. There we go. Huh. Uh, anyways, so now we're looking at a different theme. But so there's a lot of customization options. Um, what else is there to be said? Could uh, I hack it? Could I, is it root locked? Could I, uh, could I put cyanogen mod on it? Probably not. You know, I didn't actually look into that on this device. I have to imagine that somebody has looked into doing that. I, I couldn't tell you honestly. It requires the cyanogen developers to, to, to get one it and just, it spend requires some energy with it. A developer who just yeah. wants to spend the time trying to find some sort Port of an over. access point. Yeah. 
and a you know vulnerability into the device. So I'm sure. And how much was I'm it? Sure. Was it what, is it fairly inexpensive? Three hundred twenty dollars uh -huh. unlocked in China. Unlocked, uh, unsubsidized. Unsubsidized, wow. unlocked in China. So if you're there, three hundred twenty dollars is is how how much you're going to spend. If you're in the U.S., which is kind of how I'm basing this review, right? Because that's kind of where we are right now. Um, you're probably looking upwards around four hundred and eighty dollars from. Still, it shows you can get a flagship quality hardware. Mm -hmm. for a very low price. It's, I mean, still, it's very reasonable, right? $480 unlocked yeah. is pretty great. And I, I would say that more, more or less this device warrants that cost. Uh, it just you know, has a few downsides, like I've said. So uh, Unknown in our chat room says that Cyanogen is available for Mi 3, so the Mi okay. 4 presumably will get Cyanogen. I would guess point. so. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And then you could unlock, I'm sure, more of the capabilities. But again, this doesn't have the LTE band, you know, the LTE antennas for the United States necessarily, so... Uh, you know, buyer beware. Are we going to do concerned. a buy, try, don't buy? Uh, yeah, I, th I think let's do it. Right. But let's do it from the perspective of where we are, because you know, it, it's like if you're planning on importing it. Right. I think it's a different story. If you're in China, <laughs> if you're watching this show and you're in China, this is a great device for you, and I don't think you should hesitate because it's a fantastic deal. Uh, if you're in the U.S., for example, and you're thinking about picking up this device, let's do the pros. Uh, solid design. I'm just continually super impressed by the design of this device. Uh, the screen is fantastic and super sharp, just love the screen. I just want to pick it up and, and play with the phone because the screen's so sharp. Uh, Performance-wise, excellent performance, and of course, the price. It's a pretty uh, pretty awesome price for the hardware you get. Uh, as far as the cons are concerned, camera, definitely, and that's a big downside for a lot of people, so keep that in mind. The software has little issues with it that if you're a true Google Android fan, you're either going to be okay with it or it's going to be a deal breaker. Um, no LTE in the States yet, and that'll be coming down the line. And the importer process might be just you know more than you want to bear. But I'd say if you're an Android enthusiast, you might want to buy it. You, you probably would enjoy it. Outside of that, I don't know. I think there's just kind of still too many hurdles for anyone outside of Android enthusiasts in the States, anyways, well, uh, to be okay with. Too with many other good get. choices with many more to come. Well, just plenty of other corner. choices that have yeah. full support if you're living in the U.S. Yeah.